three, two, and one. Welcome to day number four of training camp. Here in Berea, we are in the Dog Bowl. Jason Gibbs, he's Andrew Gribble with a hat. He's Nick Shook with the sunblock. And four days down, one day to go, and a day off is on the horizon. Not a day off for us, a day off for the players. But we have four days down, two of them in pads. No sign of uh, going back to shorts anytime soon, per Freddie Kitchens. But... Uh, another day of work here in Berea and a pretty solid day of work, uh, Andrew Gribble. Yeah, I thought today's practice was more physical. Maybe it, just from the, the looks of it, maybe they were warming up to the to the physicality of day one. But I, up until the end where things got, kind of got a little wonky with the, the running the gassers and, and kind of the, the skirmish there between Chad Thomas and Farrell Brown, I thought it was looking good. And I think – but we, we come away from this saying, oh, yeah, it looked good. And I think we say that because the offense looked better. I mean, that just makes you feel better about a practice. I mean, it, it, as much as we like to say we like the back and forth, things just look better on the practice field when the offense is playing better. They ran the ball better. They were completing passes. I thought Jarvis Landry, every time I looked up, was catching passes today. So the offense looked better. Uh, and then the end, it just didn't go as you'd like a practice to end, uh, especially in the, in the two-minute drill there at the end where you have a turnover and two missed field goals. It's funny how you mentioned uh, Jarvis Landry catching a lot of passes. He seemed to be the go-to receiver for Baker Mayfield today, which was encouraging because through the first few practices of camp, it seemed almost as if Baker was forcing the ball to Odell Beckham to, uh, you know, it, I don't think he necessarily was, but he was definitely, that was his first uh, read in his progression a lot of the time. And so to see him instead go to some other guys today was uh was was comforting, I think, and also very encouraging and exciting because there are a ton of weapons on this team. But it's funny too because in my notes early in, in the practice, I said, "Well, not not much physicality today, not quite as much hitting." And then they really turned it up, especially in the second team period uh, for the second straight day. Uh, Mo Bamba kind of welcomes everyone to the full contact session, and then Dontrell Hilliard, Hilliard rips off a touchdown run on the first play of full contact. So I think that's when things turned up, and they never really slowed down. Uh, until guys were running 53 and a half or 53 and a third yards down the field and back. Jannard Avery did not practice today. Uh, Kareem Hunt and Duke Johnson still out. Donnie Lewis joined the injured ranks, and Damian Ratley continues to rehab that hamstring. Should we be concerned at all about Jannard Avery? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Do we know much we else really, about it? I don't. I don't think we know a whole lot about it. Other than I think we were all a little surprised yeah. when he was not out on the field here with the regulars this it's, morning. It's kind of like a surprise scratch or a surprise inactive on a game day. That's kind of what it was for Gennard today. He was even scheduled to do media and then didn't do it because, because of course, he didn't practice. So. Uh, an interesting situation that we'll probably want to keep an eye on, but hopefully it's nothing too concerning. Yeah, listed as an ankle injury. So we'll see. He looked yeah. fine walking out there. He looked fine walking out. He looked fine walking back in. Yeah. So, so we'll kind of see how that plays out. Precaution is the flavor of the season right now. Biggest uh, takeaway from the day for you, Mr. Gribble? I mean, I'll, I'll we've been really positive. I'll go uh, a, a little negative on this one. I think it's just it's it's tough to see a day like the one we saw for the kickers. Yeah. And I think that's just – we haven't talked about the kicking much on the podcast so far, but day two, Greg Joseph had a good practice. Uh, Austin Seibert was good except for one miss. Uh, today, in a situa- in, in the situation they – they ran some kicks before uh, the end of practice. Uh, Greg Joseph continued to look really good. I think the ball comes off his foot really well. That's my amateur kicking opinion as far as it goes. But it just <laughs> it, it just looks better. It just it's It's sounding good right now. He has a big leg, and he's shown it. Uh, and then Cyber struggled. Uh, I think the unofficial tally at that part was was one of four. And then both of them are brought into the field for late game, quick situations where they have to get lined up, kick their field goals. Joseph misses his from about forty five. Cyber misses his from from a longer longer distance. So Cybert that misses that's, was was pretty rough. Yeah, I mean th- all misses are the same. It just yeah. Yeah, but it didn't clearly you knew it came off the foot wrong right away. So it's just it's one of those things where. Uh, you obviously want to see these guys make kicks every practice. I think what they do today has no effect on who the ultimate winner is in terms of are you confident in them in September, but you just want to see a competition where you're having a tough time to decide between the two because they're all making their kicks. And uh, a day like today, it wasn't the case. I think it's kind of uh, interesting about this kicking situation because Greg Joseph, it seems – has benefited from working with Mike Pree from the offseason and working on his approach, which is something they've talked about many times. And he's gotten more consistent today, notwithstanding, 
Whereas I think Austin Seibert is dealing with a little bit of the pressure of being a drafted kicker and somebody that a lot of fans probably expect to come in and win the kicking job and, and solidify a position that has been anything but for the last three or four years. And and seeing them go on the field, kind of pitted against each other uh, in those scenarios, um, you know, with a, a breeze today, there was a breeze. Uh, the breeze was not why Austin missed his kick. No. It could have influenced Greg's kick a little bit. Um, but, you know, the conditions weren't perfect. They were ideal, but they weren't perfect. I will give them credit. Uh, each of them hit at least one kick through the really narrow goalpost at the end of the field, the opposite end of the field, uh, at the start of practice today, which is tough to do. But they did have a lot of tries, so definitely a work in progress, and today not the best day for them. Uh, my, my takeaway from today is, man, does a, a fracas or a scuffle or a full-blown fight, uh, is it, isn't that able to kind of knock a practice off the rails? Uh, today, Literally. yeah, today we had, uh, you know, that scuffle between Farrell Brown and, uh, and Chad Thomas and, and it looked like, you know, the, the pacing of everything was going well. The offense was finding, you know, ways to make plays. The defense was not causing as many issues, although they were making their plays as well. Um, and the, and the competition had been turned up, you know, it was just two good units going head to head for a lot of the practice. And we saw some highlights, we saw some good defensive plays. And then the fight breaks out. They have to run. They spend 10 minutes, you know, running and, and in a huddle, you know, I'm sure being admonished by their coach. And then they come back in the field to finish whatever was left of that period. And it didn't seem like much before it was all over again. It just was a kind of a buzzkill to what was a pretty solid day leading up to that point. I could not agree more. It was, a, it was rough after they got done running. And obviously, you've got guys toward the end of practice anyways, running wind sprints with all the gear on. Uh it just it, it did not look good in any way, shape, or form after they got done with I, it. I did think up until the Jarvis Landry fumble, though, on the on the two minute drill, the first team offense looked like it was cooking. Again. Yeah, like they and he was extending a play, making a play. He had he had a juke on that play that made the fans like make an audible ooh, like he. But Joe Schobert kept with the play and poked it out from behind. I mean, it's just one of those things where uh, that kind of happens. But I did like. For that brief moment, it looked like the two-minute drill offense was doing what it did the previous day. Go ahead. Offensively, it was from the offensive perspective, it was an appropriate bummer for for like for that that was it. Like that was the first team's last shot of the day. Ends with a fumble. You could have kind of um, you know saved some of the practice if they had ended up in the end zone. I liked I liked that they just ended it though. Because sometimes we've seen turnovers in that situation where, and then the coaches are like, "No, let's keep running this as if that didn't happen." No, no they were just like, "Nope." That's it. No, and that's you. You saw it a few times today with penalties. You know, Freddie asking the official, "Where was the penalty? Yeah. Who was it on?" And moving the offense back or moving the offense forward, yep. depending on who it was on. There were no gimmies in any way, shape, or form. I really appreciated Freddie and and the guys in the stripes might have not appreciated. And we we appreciate them taking the time to come to practice and officiate and everything else. But I did appreciate Freddie kind of getting into him a little bit when he when you know when there was a hold or two where. At one point, I heard him go over to the ref and say, did you see him grab his jersey? Did you see him grab it as the ball was coming to him? You didn't? Well, I did. Throw the flag and then walked away. I mean, I appreciate that. And he got on him yesterday. Yeah. He said, I just watched five straight plays that involved penalty flags that weren't thrown. And yeah. I, he's getting uh, – these guys are not there just to, to look pretty. No. He wants them throwing flags. But this is a clear point of emphasis, though, and it goes back to what – Freddie talked about with the the fight and the decision to make guys run because we've seen like what happened the skirmish day was I, I would even barely put it on like a I put it like a three yeah. on practice scuffles uh, but we we usually don't see everything coming to a halt and people running that is more of the added emphasis on penalties not practicing penalties because what you do that on the field you're getting a flag and potentially getting tossed out of the game. Uh, so it's like any it's reflected on everything they've been doing emphasis on penalties, because I think I don't even know where the Browns ranked last year, but there was situations where the team had way too many penalties and it goes hand in hand with special Not teams. Every kick goes, yeah, special kick teams, return. especially where he, they've been stressing fundamentals because that's where he said the penalties come up. So it, it just seems like he looked at this team, looked what he saw last year and was like, this team gets way too many penalties. We need to make this an emphasis, and that goes with everything. I think above all, the one thing I really love about the Freddie Kitchens staff and, and his tenure so far as a head coach is he does not cut corners anywhere. If, if the offense doesn't get it right, he'll keep you out there until you get it right. If the defense doesn't get it right, same thing. Every practice, no matter what, no matter the agenda, no That's matter the schedule. That's why we haven't ended at noon at all. Exactly. And it, and it sticks to the point of that girl was just making, which is even through the fight and everything else. 
we're going to stay out here and we're going to get this right and we're going to make sure that no, and no penalty goes unpunished and no extracurricular stuff goes unpunished as well. And it, it's, it's, a, it's the ideal total effort, I think, that you need to ensure that a team that has enough talent to win is going to be disciplined enough to win. Yeah. Do you can simultaneously acknowledge boys will be boys, heat of training camp moment, sure. these things happen, but also punish, which is basically what we saw today. It's like you're not going to hold it over Farrell Brown for you know getting involved at, in terms of like where he's lined up the next day, but you're going to the whole team's going to have to pay for it. And when the players got asked about it, they didn't seem to have an issue with it because they understand like one person gets penalty, everyone gets punished anyways yeah. in a game. Yeah, we'll hear from Larry Ogunjobi later on in our soundbite segment on that. Quickly, game balls uh, from day four of training camp. Shook, we'll start with you. Oh God, this is probably a tough one. You know who's had a really good camp and had another good camp today? David Njoku. I mean, he's catching everything that's coming his way. He looks really good. I know the area that he needs to improve in is blocking, and I haven't been able to really look closely enough at that to give you a, you know, a judgment on that so far, and it's also very early. But when it comes to catching passes, he's out there. The only time he didn't catch a pass that he probably should have was when he got held, which is the, the, when Freddie you know, got mad at the official for that, what we referenced earlier. That was the only time he didn't catch a ball that was in his radius. Um, I think he's only improving as a pass catcher, which is pretty scary when you consider that you've also got a guy like Demetrius Harris opposite him who can do just about as much offensively. So he had another good day, and I think his game ball really comes from having a good four days so far. Gribble? I'll go with Dontrell Hilliard, who had the biggest play of the day. Uh, first big long Not run on the shy, on the man. first play of full contact. I mean, I don't think it's uh, – I'll, I'll quote – I saw J- Zach Jackson tweet this during camp. I don't think there's – it's not even, like, really a question if no. this guy's going to make the team anymore. I mean, yeah. this guy's a part of the, the offense and is in the plans for what they want to do. And I think that was clear the moment Freddie Kitchens took over as offensive coordinator last year. He found a way to work him into the game plan. Obviously, he didn't want him to throw a pick like he did against the Falcons, but he found he found a way to work him into the game plan – and they, they believe in this guy not just as a running back but as a kick returner too. Uh, so I, I just – clearly with Kareem Hunt's suspension, Duke Johnson's been injured. Both have been injured right now in camp. I mean, uh, he's your number two running back on this team right now, and he'll be at minimum when the season starts number three, and that, that, that gets you on the team. And, and the name might not grab an eye or grab an ear, but his play should. I think fans will really like that going yeah. forward. And he continued to establish yourself as a great special teamer. Exactly, which is what they're looking for. Yep. No question. All right, he's Andrew Gribble. He's Nick Shook. I'm Jason Gibbs. For more on day four from training camp, be sure to download the best podcast available wherever you get your podcasts or at clevelandbrowns.com. Jim Donovan joins the podcast. Sound bites from Freddie Kitchens, from Jimmy Haslam, from Larry Ogunjobi, all that and more. We'll join you tomorrow and recap day five on the best podcast available.